In this short video, I'm going to explain how to upload your, da your data from your titration into Excel and how to do some calculations on that data to get a slope column. Uh, the first thing I need to do is open up my data file. I opened up Excel. I'm choosing Open. And then I am going to look and you can see here on my desktop I have a file called Data Run 3. That's where I stored my titration data. And I'm going to give me a, oh, some questions here. I'm just going to say finish. And here's my data. Now you can see here that there's lots of different columns. Really the only columns I care about are pH and fluid volume. So these other columns I'm going to delete voltage. I can delete. So you just click the top of the column and then go up to edit and say delete. Get rid of those. Now there's a lot of uh, rows and you can see that some of these rows have zero or no entry on the volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here, which selects all of my data. Just click over on this corner part. And then I'm going to go under data and tell it to sort by column A. And I'm going to tell it that there is a header row. And the header row is just these titles here. And that's what ignores the titles and looks at the rest. So I'm going to tell it to sort according to the header row. And what it will do is put all the cells that have actual volumes up here at the top. And if I scroll down, way down, because there's a lot of data points here, if I scroll down, I can see that at some point all the rows that have no entry for the volume are put at the bottom. So I'm just going to get rid of all these rows by um, I'm going to click on the first one and then hold down the hold on and I'm going to go down to the bottom of all that data and there's a lot of it because you have a lot of data points in this titration I'm scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the file And at the bottom of the file, I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on this row. Now all those rows between the first one I clicked and this one are highlighted. And like I said, there's no en no entry in the volume here, so I can just delete all those rows. Which leaves me only with the data that actually has rows and uh, both rows filled with data. Okay, so now I've got a volume column and I've got a pH column and now I'm going to make a slope column. So I clicked at the header row and I typed in slope and then <coughs> the calculation I'm doing requires that the point has a point before it and a point after it so I'm not going to be able to do that with the first data point because there's no point before it but I'm going to do a calculation in this cell. Now it's already got a volume for that row and it's got a pH for that row. But for this data point, I'm also going to calculate the slope of the titration curve at that point. To do so, I click on the cell and then I go up here and I type an equal sign and that tells Excel that I'm going to put in a calculation here. I'm not going to put in a number or a word. I'm going to put in a calculation. So up here, I'm going to say, now if you remember, the slope is the change in the y values over the change in the x values. So I'm going to have the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. Now the change in the y values is going to be the y values of pH. So it's going to be the pH after this point and type click on that and then tap minus and then click the y value before this point. So here this 
cell is C3 and C3 the change in the pH is the pH after it minus the pH before it B4 minus B2 and to get the change in the X values I do a similar thing but the X values are the volumes so I'm going to click on the A4 minus the A2 and that's all there is I'm just telling it to calculate the difference between these two pHs and divide it by the difference in these two volumes now if I'm happy with my equation which I am I click the check mark and it calculates the slope and so that's the slope at that at that point in the titration curve what I want to do now is make a similar equation for all the points below it now of course here this is C3 so it will need B4 and B2 at the top of the equation but for C4 I'll need B5 and B3 well Excel knows how to do that so I can just click on this cell and then scroll all the way down to the bottom of my data so let's do that so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my data and then on the next last place now remember I clicked way up here on the C3 I'm going to click down here again I'm going to hold down shift and then click on it and so that entire column there is highlighted and then I'm going to do this neat trick that Excel has I'm going to say under edit I'm going to say fill down and when I say fill down it puts the equation all the way down that column but like notice here in number row number 421 it's changed the the row numbers to make sense for this row so it's, it's kind of done our job for us it does a smart little thing there and I'm going to scroll back up and so for every point I've got here Excel has calculated a slope I'm going to scroll down the data a little bit and look at my slopes here it's really quick and I'm noticing that they're all kind of small values now I should see a higher slope near the end point of the titration so I'm going to keep on going until I start seeing something interesting just keep going and uh, 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 all of a sudden the values start getting higher and that means the slope of the curve is getting higher and I notice that here is the highest slope of the curve and so I'm going to expect that that's going to be right about where the end point for the titration is and we'll probably see that in the titration curve and then the slopes go back down again so your data should show a highest value around where there's some kind of a kink in the curve and that will be the endpoint of your titration so now you've got your data you've got fluid volume pH and slope and you're ready to graph them but graphing them be the next